Hello and welcome to this Opalis webcast on automation with compliance. My name is Adam Hall and I'm the technical product manager for Opalis. When we think about uh, process and compliance, we think about this in terms of uh, helping you meet your business SLAs. We think about this in terms of uh, there are things that are going to happen in your organization that you're going to respond to in a fully ordered main and there are all things that you are going to respond to in your organization for which you may want some level of automation uh, but from which you want to be able to have a manual task. So here we have uh, the Contoso Critical Business Service. This is an operations manager distributed application that is synchronized across the service manager through the connector framework. And what we have here is a couple of incidents that have been raised against uh, this business service. The first one is a degraded level of service, so there's an element of the application that's not performing uh, optimally. And then we have a security configuration discrepancy alert. Now this is uh, a, a compliance drift alert incident that has been raised by uh, the desired configuration manager component of configuration manager by comparing the state of the application against the policy that we've configured in the ITGRC. And it has been found that the, the application is outside the bounds uh, of an acceptable configuration from our com compliance requirements. So this is an example of something that you would want to respond to in a manual way. So what we're going to do here is we, when we have an automated incident has been raised, but what we're going to do is just create a, a, a change request for someone to go and find out what is wrong uh, and remediate that. You can see here that we have a template inside Service Manager and we have filled out all of the, uh, all of the fields dynamically as part of the template. We have attached the business service uh, as an item that needs to change and we're just going to go OK on that and that will put it into someone's queue to go and look at that compliance drift and work out uh, why, uh, why has that application drifted outside of uh, its uh, policy requirements. Now the second uh, incident that we have here is the degraded level of service. Now this might be because uh, an application is performing poorly under load, it could be that something has stopped. So what we have here, uh, we have uh, created an Opalis workflow which has a standard set of remediation tasks that we run when an application is performing poorly. You guys know what these things are, it's the things that you do every time you get an incident uh, raised against you. So you're going to go and check application logs, you're going to go and check event logs, other services running, all those things that you do every time something is going on. So what we have here uh, is, a, is an Opalis automation that we've stopped mid flow and you can see that if I, if I zoom in here you can see that we're running a standard set of uh, remediation tasks. Now as you can see by the red crosses above them, uh, remediation 1 and remediation 2 have not been successful in uh, remediating the issue. If I just scroll down a little bit you'll see that as we have tried to run that remediation although it has been unsuccessful Opalis has still updated the incident uh, log so that we have a capture of all that information uh, of what we've tried and what, we, what has not worked. So I'm just going to go and take the demo pause off which will allow the, uh, uh, the remediation to, to then carry on and I'll zoom back in and what you'll see is that once we took the pause off uh, remediation 3 has actually been successful in fixing the problem and it has then gone and updated the activity uh, inside Service Manager and resolved the incident. Now the interesting thing here is if you look to the right hand side the incident escalation. If we'd been unsuccessful with, the rem with remediation 3 we would have then escalated this incident up to uh, a, a person, a human being to, to go and have a look at the incident. The difference in this case as to what we had before is that now we have an incident that is populated with all of those remediation tasks that we tried, all of the information about what worked and what didn't, uh, and then they can crack on and just work through the, the, the process of actually remediating uh, the service. So that, that's an example of an automated remediation task. Now here at Contoso we want to be a little more uh, robust in our escalations and so we've noticed uh, that we, we can we have more than one uh, incident being raised against the service. So we can actually poll uh, against the business service and see how many incidents are running. I'm just going to simulate this process running at uh, 6 o'clock in the morning which is what it would normally be scheduled and if we go and take a look at this as it runs across, I'll just zoom in there, this is a, a workflow that is taking a look at the business service 
It is counting the number of incidents that have been raised against that service uh, in, in, the, in a set time frame. And if it exceeds a threshold, then it is going to create a problem. Uh, and what we're going to see is, is that when that problem is raised, uh, is that all of the incidents are going to be uh, re linked back to that problem and then escalated out to a problem manager. Now what that means is when they come in at 8.30 in the morning, they're going to have in their queue a problem that's automatically been raised with all the incidents that are associated with that problem and they can see that the number of incidents have been raised against the business service and they can then go and do some root cause analysis to work on uh, what was actually causing that. And so that's the second part of, uh, of, of the uh, incident management is to know when you have too many of them. So if we come back to our Contoso uh, business service here, if I do a refresh, what you see now is the, uh, the manual change request uh, that we raised so that someone can go and look at what that compliance drift was. And we come back to uh, the automated problem that has been raised. And these can now go and be investigated. So that is uh, the Opalis webcast for com uh, automation with compliance. I do hope you've enjoyed the webcast and uh, I look forward to talking to you further soon. Bye for now.